of inheritance today. So uh, we basically have done a lot of these stuff here. Okay, we have done monohybrid, dihybrid, epstein and codominance. So let me get my writing tab. Okay, so we have done monohybrid here, um, which is uh, usually represented like with like this. It's like normal dominant recessive thing, all right? That's and then dihybrid. We've done two genes, two traits, um, and usually it's seen something like this. I mean, it could be any alphabet you want. I'm just showing you how it might look like and might symbolize. In X link, the X. The gene is on X chromosome and epsilon on Y, and maybe it will look like this or like this. Okay, um, and that will be different in terms of patterns of inheritance as well. By the way, if you not don't notice it yet, I'm trying to um, I I can't speak very loud because I have like a really bad sore throat. I don't think it's COVID because I've not been out for like God knows how long. Um, but yeah, I think I just had like an infection caught from talking too much or something. Anyways, uh, yeah, so if you can't hear me, let me know, okay? Uh, I hope you can. Anyways, uh, let's continue. So we have learned x link we have learned co-dominance. Co-dominance is the idea that um, two alleles are uh, fully expressed in the heterozygotes. So it's not, it doesn't look like one big letter, small letter. It would usually be a big letter and a superscript of some sort here. Um, and then multiple alleles, we have learned um, also, the idea is that there's more than two alleles coding for the trait. So you have the, this is the blood group example. It depends on the situation, okay, what the relationship between the alleles is. In the case of blood group, it's co-dominant between allele A and allele B here, and recessive allele for O. Um, but of course that differs. We did a rabbit fur example as well, and obviously that was different as well, yeah. And then last but not least with the gene interactions, which um, sort of look like dihybrid, but the, but the difference is uh, they code for one phenotype only. So the hybrid can be tall, short, purple, white flowers. But in this case, uh, two of these genes determine whether or not the flower is purple or white or pink, for example. Um, and last but not least, we are we are going to learn autosomal linkage today. Now, uh, just before we start autosomal linkage, I need to make sure you understand this. Um, autosomal linkage is not autosome linked. Okay, there's X link, there's auto autosome link. So um, we talk we talk about this uh, in terms of autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive mutation. So that follows the normal recessive and dominant rules. Or when we talk about X link, we say X link recessive or X link dominant. But um, autosomal linkage is none of the above. Okay, it's different. What it's talking about is two genes on the same chromosome. Okay, we're going to do the F2 ratio. Uh, I'm going to show you slides on autosomal linkage now. So, again, autosomal linkage is about two genes being on the same chromosome. We say that these genes on the same chromosome are linked and they are all in an autosomal linkage group. That's why the word here is autosomal linkage, right? Not linked okay it's linkage group referring to linkage group okay it means that these two chromosomes sorry these two genes will be likely to be inherited together and there's no independent assortment and no separation during NFAs. we're talking about the separation of alleles segregation of alleles usually they will segregate because they're on different chromosomes all this while we have been assuming if they are genes they are different genes like a dihybrid like in gene interaction when they are different genes we assume that they're on separate chromosome but in this case it's not it's on the same chromosome so how does that affect how does that influence um independent development uh, to do this we go back a few slides we actually go back a lot of slides um, to this particular slide here. Okay, we saw Mendelian genetics and we uh, you can see here that the gene G and the gene W are on separate chromosomes, they're not the same chromosomes, and therefore can result in different gametes, right, different combination of alleles. So this 
if this one separates into one cell, it could be big G, big W. We went through this before. This one could be small g, small w. This is big G, small w. This one is small g, big w. Why can it do this? Because of the arrangement. See this one, blue, red, blue, red. This one, blue, red, red, blue. This is independent assortment. This different gametes is result of independent assortment. But when it comes to, so sorry, when it comes to um, same, same, um, two genes on the same chromosome. Okay, can you imagine if there's one here called R, big R maybe, uh, maybe both same on the, the sister chromatids will always have the same one, okay, assuming no crossover. There's no way that a big G and big R is going to separate. Okay, let me show you. Now, it, w can change, right? It can be small w or big w here. But you can see a big G and big R is always going to be inherited together. Small G and small R are always going to be inherited together. Why? They are on the same chromosome. How they separate from each other? They cannot separate from each other. These alleles are on the same chromosome. You don't inherit half a chromosome. You inherit the whole chromosome. One from your dad, one from your mom, right? Okay. So see here, uh, also the same. Even if there is independent assortment, it doesn't affect these two genes here. It's still going to be big G, big R. Here, it's still going to be small g, small r. It doesn't have that four different gametes. There's only two different gametes here, right? Because they are on the same chromosome. Okay, so let's look at how this affects our inheritance. Um, we're going to ignore that line first and come back later. All right, so let's do an example. Right, let's talk about body shape and antenna shape of the fruit fly rosophila. Now, this is a real example. It's not made up. Um, this is a linked two linked genes. They're on the same chromosome. The body color gene, okay, is dominant allele for striped body, recessive allele for ebony body. Ebony is like black body, okay. Antenna shape gene, the dominant one is for normal antennae, like this. Uh, whereas a uh, recessive one is actually a mutant, which only occurs in the lab, not in real life. It's the allele for Aristopedia and the antennae. And the antenna basically just looks more like a leg. Look at this. It looks like a leg, like has segments and everything. Very weird. Can you have imagine flies with legs as antenna? Creepy. You can search it up. I chose the not so creepy one, just in case people cannot tahan. But anyways, um. Yeah, this, these are the four alleles, two genes, right? Two genes, and uh, they are linked. So how do we show that if they are linked? Uh, we, we use brackets. So if it's homozygous dominant, we are going to use brackets like this. Um, like if we just put EEAA without brackets, this indicates they're on different chromosomes. If we use these brackets, we are indicating that they're on the same chromosome. So let's do the normal cross here. Um, I'm going to switch to one note so we can draw some stuff. There was one class I was teaching your class, but I wrote in the S2 one note by accident. <laughs> then I do some transferring. Oh, anyways, uh, back here. Um, so what do we say? OK, so this is the parental phenotype and genotype. I hope you're taking this down. This should be like, I don't know how many genetic diagrams really, but today we're going to draw like, um, Five more. I'm gonna draw five more journey diagrams. So this this is one. Um, this is purebred cross with purebred homozygous dominant cross with homozygous recessive. Okay, and then uh, you can see the gametes only got one type here, lot. Okay, um, actually in in what do you call in um, link genes, so for autosomal linkage, the one in bracket will always end up as one gummy. This one will end up with one gummy, this one will end up as one gummy. Okay, always the one in bracket, it won't shuffle. Okay. So um, this one, like usual, it looks like this. Um, besides the annotation, I feel like F1 looks relatively normal. It, it results in a heterozygous. It does have brackets. Um, they're all striped bodies and no antenna. It looks completely normal. So how about F2? I'm going to draw F2 for you, uh, but I hope you're drawing as well because the more you draw, the more you get it, I suppose. So what are we crossing? Uh, let me change color here. We're crossing stripe, normal. So F1, uh, F1, F1. This is the F1 parental phenotype. 
I'm causing a strike normal, strike normal. Okay, uh, it's this genotype, so I'm just going to copy that. Alright, in the gametes, okay, as I said just now, right, in Gotosomo linkage, you need to shuffle them. The one in the bracket will stay as the gamete, right, so it's going to look like this. Okay, you don't have any other, there's no shuffling, there's no independent assortment, so there's only two, they're on the same chromosome here. Alright, uh, uh, what's the offspring genotype and phenotype here? Okay, um, brace yourself for the ugliest genetic diagram. Ugly as Punnett Square. All the ones I drew this morning was ugly for some reason. Maybe it's my sore throat. I don't know how that affects, but somehow I feel like it does. Uh, gametes. Big E, big A here, and small E, small A here. Big E, big A, small E, small A. Alright, so um, we're going to keep the brackets, always keep the brackets. Okay, we do the same procedure really here. Um, we usually put dominant one in front. Oops. Small e, small a, small e, small a. Alright, don't forget the phenotype. So we have this one got strike. This is normal. Strike. And this is normal. Strike. Normal. Because the dominant uh, in this one is uh, Ebony and Aristopede. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, this is what we expect the ratio of striped to normal to Ebony Aristopedia is 3 to 1. Right, doesn't it look slightly weird? You realize here that when F1 is crossed with F1, it doesn't give you the nitrate one ratio. Why? Because there's not so many options of gametes here. Um, there's no independent assortment. Uh, this means that the, the, the genes don't separate from each other, they're inherited together. It's never going to be big A, big E, small A, unless they're in the bracket together. Okay, this one. So, obviously, because of that, there is a lot of lesser probabilities of genotype. Okay. There's not so many combinations. So the F2 ratio looks very different. Now, uh, I just want to make, make sure you understand that it really depends. This ratio here is not fixed. It really depends on what is in the bracket together, what alleles are on the same chromosome together. Maybe an illustration here would help. So, what are we? What what's actually going on here? Actually, this right. Uh, let me choose a different color, a different blue, so it's not so confusing. Okay. So actually, right on this side, the first diagram. What what we are what we are sorting, what we drawing, representing is actually this. Okay. Let's assume this individual has this kind of, see, E and A on the same chromosome. On this fella, small e and small a are on the same chromosome. So this fella, small e, small a on the same chromosome. How about this one? This fella, this uh, offspring actually uh, inherits one, one chromosome from the dad and one chromosome from the mom. Right, okay, I don't know which one's the mom and dad, and of course sex is not shown here. But one from each parent, essentially. So he, person inherits uh, one big E, one uh, blue chromosome with the big E and big A, and then one red chromosome with the small E and small A. Doesn't separate. Now what happens when you cross cross F1 with F1? So I'm just going to control place this because I'm lazy. Okay, here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to do it here. More. I don't know where it went. Alright, so what happens when we cross it with each other? What happens? So the offspring will then 
um, will then inherit again one from the mom and one from the dad, so one for each parent. So it could be that this fella inherited two blue chromosomes, this fella inherited, just so happens, inherited one red and one blue, these two. Right? And then the last fella inherited two red. This is what's going on here. Why doesn't they separate? Because they, again, they are all the same chromosome. So I hope they help you um, visualize that. Now the question is, what if it's not big E, big A on the same chromosome? What if it's big A, it's, it's maybe big E, small A? What if? Okay, so let's, let's, let's do the second example. Okay, it's not in your slides, but I just want you to try it so that you understand uh, how it influences. So I'm just going to change color completely. I'm just going to write it is on the right hand side. You can write it downwards. Uh, I didn't provide enough space below for it. So I'm just going to write it sideways here. This is example number two for um, autosomal linkage. Okay. And this time, instead of crossing uh, the purebred, instead of having homozygous dominant for both sides, it's going to have stripe and it's purebred. Let me write purebred. Purebred. But this is stripe and aristopedia. So basically, it's going to be like this. Okay, cross with what? Purebred. You guessed it. Ebony and normal. So it's going to be small e, big a. Small e, big a. Okay, what, what would the... So we're going to do two generations of crossing. Okay. Two generations of crossing here and see what's going on. So I'm just going to let you try and figure this out yourself. Uh, and then I'm going to draw it in a minute or two. So I'm going to use some time to zoom out a little bit so that you can refer to things. I hope you can still read it. Okay. A few minutes. I need to toilet. Be right back.
All right, thanks for waiting. Welcome back. Uh, your friend asked, is it all strip in Aristopedia? Um, if you are talking about the F2 ratio, the F1 ratio, so the product of this, I don't think you are right because Aristopedia is recessive. So um, let's do it together and see what's going on. As I said, we're going to do this for two generations. So um, only that as well. Uh, but let's finish this one first. So we have um, this one has one type of gamete. This one only has one type of gamete. Yeah, again, don't forget it's linked. So um, you still have to draw a point square, but don't forget to do this brackets. Okay, sorry, I'll oh, don't draw nicely. You guys can hear me, right? I'm not too soft. I'm trying to save my voice. I still got one more class tomorrow. Normal. Oh, sorry. Was it stripe and normal? Why is it stripe and normal? That's because the normal stripe is dominant and these are heterozygote. This is essentially a heterozygote. It is a heterozygote for both genes. So all are striped and normal. Okay, what happens if you cross F1 with F1? So, um, I'm just going to draw. I'm just going to um, cross stripe with normal. But you realize this stripe and normal uh, is not the same as our previous stripe and normal, as the genes that the alleles that are linked uh, are different. So it looks, it will look slightly different too. So big E, small blue. A, small e, big A, right, copy back the same thing. Right, you realize the gametes are different, that's why the product is different too. So, this is the gametes here in F1 cross. I feel like by whispering, I'm doing ASMR. Please don't fall asleep. This is quite hard. I feel like this might not be something you can learn on your own. Alright, and then draw a Punnett square, obviously. Um, sorry, it's very ugly. All my genetic diagrams today was really ugly, I don't know why. Okay, I tried, I tried, okay. Don't forget the brackets, they are still linked. Yes, everything genotype must be within this form of bracket. Again, the bracket shows that they are on the same chromosome. Must draw bracket. If you don't draw bracket, it means you, they are not linked. You can see here that the phenotype of the resulting offspring is different. And here we have um, stripe, but are we still PD? Pedia, sorry. This one is norm. This is uh, stripe and normal. Heterozygous. Uh, stripe and normal here as well. And here you have big A, big A, but small E. So this is actually ebony uh, and normal. So you have a different ratio here because of the different values that are linked. So we have <clears throat> stripe. The ratio should be stripe uh, aristopedia to we always put the homozygote in front, then we put the heterozygote later, then put the recessive one behind. Usually. We always order this in um, the order of dominance. See if I'm louder, it cracks, sorry. <clears throat> So this ratio will be 1 to 2 to 1. So yeah, as you can see, see if you put different alleles in the bracket, you end up with different F2 ratios. So um, in this case, you really, really need to read the question very, very carefully, um, know what they're saying, uh, understand what, what alleles are linked, what alleles is not linked. But if they are doing a normal Mendelian cross, 
uh, it's very likely that it will look more like the first example here. Um, but if it's not a Mendelian cross, um, like they didn't say it's purebred or whatever, so maybe they most probably give you a genotype. Um, look carefully because it might end up like this. Okay, so um, that's example one and example two. Um, if that's all good, we are going to move on to the next question. Next part here. So under um, autosomal linkage, um, you realize that actually there's big E, big A, this in brackets is basically this, but like, you know, fancy brackets, right? So it looks like dihybrid, but actually it's not like, yeah, this one you expect a 9331, but it's a 321, right? So, so, um, but so there are two genes involved here, two genes for two traits as well, just that's linked, right? So the question is, if we get an organism with that we know there are two genes, uh, how do we tell if they're linked or not? Okay, so the idea is to do a cross. So it's, this is quite a long way because you have to, these are flies, you know, that means they take time to grow, to hatch eggs, you have to feed every day. It's very much fun to do two generations. So this is how we do it in one generation. So we do a test cross here. Test cross means we cross with a homozygous recessive individual. Now, um, it's different uh, from the dihybrid and monohybrid test cross because in, in the previous test cross, we were the, the question was more of, oh, I found a dominant phenotype plant. I found a tall plant. I don't know whether it's dominant homozygous dominant or is it heterozygous. Uh, in this case, we already know the genotype. We just don't know whether it's linked or it's dihybrid. So how to find if this is linked or dihybrid? So you find an individual heterozygous. You already know it's heterozygous. You cross it with a homozygous recessive individual. Now, if it's homozygous recessive, okay, then uh, sorry, if it's a linked, then you would see two different genotypes. Okay, so I, I need you to draw this diagram here with me. Actually, I already drew it, but I need you to draw this diagram so that you understand. See, um, this the meats here is the source problem. Or this is not problem. This is the this is the source of the different ratio, right? Because the bracket one will stay together, will stay as one gamete. The bracketed ones will always stay as one gamete. So the resulting phenotype is just one to one. Now uh, imagine, I don't need to draw a diagram because it's just way too complicated. But imagine if it's dihybrid. What happens when you cross a heterozygous to a homozygous individual? Okay, this is if dihybrid. Okay, what is the ratio you expect? So quickly type in the chat, what do you think? Anyone? What would be the ratio if it's a normal dihybrid cross? Anyone? Hello, anyone there? Can you just wait? Ah, thank you. I thought you guys just waiting for me. So um yeah, the the ratio you get is one 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 one. Why? Because this particular organism can have four different gametes. So you have big E, big A, big E, small A, small A, small E, big A, and small E, small A. Ah, like that. Right. Um, four different gametes, and this one only has one. So you, if you do the cross, you end up with a one to one to one to one, to one ratio. But you can see here in the autosomal linkage, it's not so right. It's it's um, it's the bracketed one will stay together because it's on the same chromosome. So the ratio you will find is only one to one. They don't have these other two phenotypes. They only have two phenotypes. And the two phenotypes, interestingly, if you realize, is the uh, same as the original. This one has four different ones. This one is the same as the original ones. 
very interesting. So again, test cross would give a one-to-one -one ratio, not the one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio expected from a dihybrid cross. So if you see the offspring, okay, got four phenotypes, and you know, ah, uh, this one that this one is normal dihybrid lah. If you see that only got two types of offspring phenotype, and it's about one-to-one -one ratio, you know that they are linked. Okay, but but here comes the interesting part. The other thing that contributes to genetic variation is not just independent assortment, right? In this case, there's no independent assortment. But another thing can still influence crossover. Crossing over can influence the arrangement of gametes. What if, okay, right? Don't look at the words first. What if just now, right, we use our example one, big E, big A, like this, and then small. Small a like this. These are homologous chromosomes, by the way. Okay, same genes, different alleles. Homologous chromosomes. What if they both undergo some sort of crossover at prophase one? So um, prophase one, they look more like this, lah. Okay. So I'm just gonna quite quite draw it. What if some sort of crossing over happens? Okay. So crossover, how does it look like? So maybe something like this. Maybe this arm becomes red. Oh, sorry, I should use red then. Okay, maybe I'll draw the arm first. This is the blue side. Okay. What if this arm becomes red? This this part swap. Oh man, it's really ugly. One. Okay, better. Okay, so what, what combinations we have now? Okay, let's look at the four different chromatids, right? Let's zoom in. Okay. So you have, on the, this chromatid, you have big E, big A. This chromatid, you have big E. But here, you have small A, because you swap over already. How about there? How about the other side? This one is small e, small a. Here you have small e. This one here is big a. Whoa. Certainly you have all four different gametes. But this crossover, crossing over, is relatively rare. Okay, this results in four different things. Okay, what causes cross, crossing over? And you go and read meiosis 1. Meiosis 1, remember? We learned it last week. Last, last week. True video. Okay. It's, crossing over is random too. So it could it could happen at any part of the part of the chromosome really. Or any arm. Okay, it cross, crossing over happens between the non-sister chromatids. Whoops, I don't know where it went. Alright. So but so this 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 is no crossing over. Okay, um, the crossing over is relatively rare, but to have no crossover means total linkage. Means the no crossover at all in like a thousand thousand offspring. That is very very rare. Okay, total linkage is very very rare. So is the chances are when you breed your organism, when you do this cross here, this test cross, chances are you will not only get two phenotype, you'll get four also. But it doesn't tend to the one to one to one to one ratio. Okay, it will have this kind of pattern. So you have four different uh four different uh phenotypes still. Okay, this two is what you expect from a link genes. So this one shows autosomal linkage. And you can see that the percentage is very high. This one's very, very low. Okay, this one is result of crossover. Rare crossing over. Okay, happens at again prophase one. Huh? Remember when study at prophase. 
Okay, so the idea is the idea is these two genes are linked, correct? But sometimes crossover can happen. And if it happens, it's very rare. Okay, but it's even more rare that it's not happening at all. So when you breed in real life, okay, theoretically you only get two, correct? Theoretically, you should only get two phenotypes. It's exactly the same parents, one to one ratio. But in real life, there's a very small proportion that shows the other two phenotypes. Okay, so from here, we can also do one more fun thing from this information. Because we know that the closer the loci are together, the lower the chance of crossing over. What does that mean? Okay. Oops, I don't know what happened here. Hang on. What's that? Man, that slide is big. Okay, so if, let's look at this diagram right here. If the linked genes are very close together, then crossing over must occur exactly at this point in order for the gene 1 and gene 2 to separate and cause different uh, cause a stop like this. It must be very very close together. Only crossovers happening in this small region in between the two can produce uh, different what we call recombinant chromosomes or recombinant classes. Okay, parental classes is the autosomal linkage. Right? Recombinant classes is the very crossing over one. Okay. But are very, very far apart. Cross crossing over can happen here or here or here or here or here or here. You know, infinite amounts uh, okay, of probabilities here. There's a very big region for very large space here for crossing over to occur, which will cause the allele alleles to be swapped out between non-sister chromatids. So the idea, let's go back up, is the closer the loci are, the closer the position of the genes are together, the lower the chance of crossing over. Okay, get it? So if the loci are very close, okay, if loci is close, then there will be a very small percentage of recombinant classes. You realize that it's also even number, you see not? Um, I have failed in spelling. Okay, they are the same amount. Of course, if you swap, then it's always going to be an even number. It's going to be one of these and one of these. Okay, so it's even number. Usually, they are both even numbers. Yeah. Okay, if the loci, on the other hand, is far apart, then you would expect a very high chance of crossing over. High chance of crossing over. And therefore, what would you expect? A high percentage of recombinant classes though? And therefore, we can use we can use recombinant classes percentage in order to estimate distance. We can use I feel like I write already more clear lah. percentage of recombinant classes to estimate distance. Right. And this estimate, this value we calculate is called the crossover value. Okay, so what is the crossover value? Crossover value is an estimate of distance between two gene loss and chromosome or measure. Okay, fine, right, it's a measure. The percentage, this is the percentage that belongs to the common class. It's not just one, it's two. So six plus six equals to 12 this case. This here is the crossover value. And obviously, if when we have a small crossover value, this means that the closer the loci are together, and the because the smaller the loci are together, the lower chance of crossing over. Okay, 
So it makes sense. If the loss size close, there'll be a low percent of recombinant classes, means lower crossover value law, low crossover value. Now, if the loss size is far apart, then there'll be a higher chance of crossing over, higher percentage of recombinant classes, and therefore a higher crossover value. And that is why the crossover value Okay, is used as a measure of distance and, uh, and it's calculated from the recombinant classes. I hope that is clear. Because we are done. Yay, we also some more linkage. So, so far, we have done all these. Okay. Yay. Now, let's look at the F2 ratio. Let's try to break it down bit by bit. Now, F2 ratio is the product of crossing F1 to F1, it means heterozygotes. Uh, Oswald asked 44% and 6% are results as cross. No, that one's an experimental result, not result of the test. Yeah, uh, yes, experimental result of the test cross, correct. Okay, I'm going to summary, okay. So summary, F1 times, uh, S1 cross to F1 will result in F2, and uh, there are some set F2 ratios in for some patterns of inheritance. So let's do this again. So, 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 uh, hang on. So again, monohybrid usually expressed like this. Oh, that is too thick. Okay, normal recessive dominant sort of phenotype. This is probably F1 here. If you cross this with itself, it will result in a 3 to 1 ratio for sure, for sure. Um, dihybrid, on the other hand, two genes, two LLs each codes for two traits, right? So uh, resulting in a 9 3 3 1 ratio. Remember the complicated Punnett square? This is it. Um, next, X-linked. X-linked, it will be some, it will look something like this or something like this, right? Right, and uh, F2 phenotype really depends on which allele is recessive or dominant, which one you're looking at, and also um, also depends on, like, uh, it depends on whether the dad has the recessive or the dad has the dominant. Okay, depends. So this one really, you have to see the situation. Read the question. Co-dominance. Now, co-dominance is actually um, modified modified 3 to 1 ratio because uh, the idea is that the, the alleles that are co-dominant, they are both fully expressed in heterozygote. So this fella here is probably a homozygous. This fella here is talking, this one is homozygous, some trait. And this two here is actually reflecting the phenotype of a heterozygote. So intermediate phenotype here. Um, multiple alleles, on the other hand, again, these are, this is one of the examples you've seen just now. This depends which alleles are involved and the relationship between those alleles. So you again need to read the question very carefully. And obviously, um, heterozygotes in multiple alleles got many types. So if they say F1, cross with F1, you're like, which F1? Like, which which one exactly? It's very, it's, they won't say it's F1. It's very hard to tell. Okay. And you must read the question mark, see whether it's co-dominant or it's a dominant series, etc. Um, uh, second last one. Gene interactions, again, it looks like dihybrid, but it influences one phenotype only, so one type of phenotype. Um, this because it's uh it, it's two genes, so it's actually usually a modified nine three three one. If you have realized, because it's two genes, right? But then there's only one phenotype, or two maybe two or three types, subtypes of phenotype. So it's like flower color, purple, pink, or white. Okay, it's but it's all about flower color. So but flower color is one phenotype. Then uh, it could be nine plus three to two three to one. So maybe it's twelve. 12, 12 to 3 to 1, depending on the situation. So you're going to read again. Last but not least, 
two genes on the same chromosome, so it will look like this, more like this, so brackets. Okay, this depends on which alleles are on the same chromosome. So, um, yeah, you're going to read the question carefully, whether it's like this or is it like this. Right, and that would, this one would give a 3 to 1 ratio, this one would give a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, depending on the chromosome. Also depends on the question, if they want to change this up to make it co-dominant and autosomal linkage, then you've got to figure things out. So this one depends on the question. So yeah, that's pretty much what we have learned so far. Your friend asked, means during exam they will give the parental genotype for autosomal linkage, right? Not necessarily. Have you done the worksheet? The last question didn't give you the parental genotype. They give you some information. They give maybe they tell you what cross with what purebred, cross with purebred, produce what. Then from there, you gotta guess. Like you gotta you gotta understand a question and work it out. So yep, that's it for this particular part. Um, tomorrow 8 a.m. there is going to be a video posted on mutations. That is the last part for this chapter. And then, of course, as you see in the in the announcements, there is a Wednesday live session for those who want it live. Okay, it's optional. It's three to five on Wednesday. No one has class then across the three classes. It will be recorded. You can watch it after if you want. And that's it. I will give you a 10 minute break and we'll come back and we will be discussing the chi squared test practice that I've given you last week. So yeah, I'll see you in 10 minutes. I need to rest my trunk.